here at the Two Oceans Aquarium about to meet my first guest, Jennifer Sanasi. Jennifer is a familiar face to most, being a reporter and a presenter for News24. Jennifer is used to interviewing some of SA's most loved celebrities as well as international stars. But today the roles will be reversed as I'll be the one asking all of the questions. Happy days everyone, it's World Burger Day. Why don't you tell us what kind of flavors we're Born and to raised in Toronto, together. Jennifer began her career as a presenter, announcing lottery numbers on a Canadian TV station. She then crossed the Pacific to work in print journalism in South Korea, before heading across more time zones to South Africa. She's put down her roots in the mother city, but hasn't lost her appetite for travel or her love for the sea. Thank you. Can I come on board? Cool. Thank you. Something good going on there. What a treat to see the dolphins out so for you. Special. How did you get into journalism? Well, I've always loved to talk. So when I was in high school, I thought, why don't I just make this into a profession? I love telling stories, I love meeting people, and I love hearing stories. When I decided that, I applied for journalism school. I have my degree in media studies and then my diploma in print and broadcast journalism, and I never looked back. I never questioned it. I never thought, hmm, maybe I should be a lawyer or a doctor. I just went for journalism. How did your family feel about you moving to South Africa? When I told my mom I was moving to South Africa, <laughs> she actually said, that country is the wild, wild west. <laughs> My mom has never been to Africa. She's never been to South Africa. She's coming this year. It's going to be her first time here. And I'm very excited to show her that it's not like the wild, wild west, that it's actually very beautiful. I think she's going to be really happy when she comes here. As an Indian woman, do you feel a strong connection to your Indian roots? Speaking about my mom and Indian roots, she came to visit me when I lived in South Korea with 40 rotis in her hand luggage. As all Indian moms probably would. <laughs> she rocked up and she said, okay, now invite all your friends over. I'm gonna cook for them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I start to see myself as more of a, of a global citizen, but of course, those, those Indian roots are always there. In Cape Town, I've, I've managed to surround myself with great friends. Not all of them are Indian, but the ones who are, we really do uh, practice Indian traditions when, when we're together. So I think it's really nice for us to have that, that community. Um, I think the Indian community is, is all about spending time with each other and, um, and sharing things, sharing, sharing food, sharing experiences. So I've managed to, to get that here with, with some of my friends, so it's great. What surprised you most about living in South Africa? The diverse cultural experience you get here. Um, there are so many different people from so many different walks of life living and cohabitating in this beautiful country. People don't really understand the beauty that is here. I think that's starting to change now with Cape Town and South Africa. But that was, was a really nice surprise for me. Karishma knew that Jennifer has a passion for the oceans, but she'd also mentioned that she had a bit of a phobia about birds. Clearly the parrotfish weren't a problem, but Karishma was convinced that Jennifer would be won over by the feathered residents at the aquarium. Hello. Hi, lovely to meet you. Hello. Amazing, as they usually do. Exactly. Does, but he's just so cute, and I'm very so happy cute. that he's happy to see us. We're taking these little guys on their daily excursion to the ocean basket kelp forest so that they can get their daily dose of exercise. Should we go? Follow yeah. them. Come on! I wish they could follow me around every day. I know, it's adorable. <laughs> All the penguins at the aquarium are birds that have been rescued from beaches or fishermen's nets and they cannot be released due to injuries or the risk of introducing disease to wild populations. Having said goodbye to Jennifer and the penguins, Karishma headed from the waterfront to the Cape Town CBD. I'm at one of the trendiest spots in Cape Town to grab a cup of coffee to meet my second guest who's been wooed by the mother city, lifestyle and travel blogger, Sarah Khan. 
Like Jennifer, Sarah Khan is also Canadian by birth, but grew up in Saudi Arabia, India and the USA. She also visited many other countries before deciding on a whim to take a holiday in Cape Town. Hi Karishma, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. It's so lovely to meet Great you. Great to meet you too. Welcome to Minas. Thank you so much, excited to be here. This is such a cute little spot. Know. This is one of my favorite places in Cape Town and I love coming here on a day like today for some iced coffee, so I hope you don't mind, I got you one too. Thank you so much, this looks amazing. Sarah, I know that you're from the US, and like me, you seem to suffer from an insatiable case of wanderlust. What cities around the world have captured your heart and what brought you to Cape Town? Basically, I just really love any city that has this amazing mix of culture and history and just really vibrant architecture. And I really feel like Cape Town just encompasses all that in one place. Can you tell me a bit more about your background in writing and journalism? I got a master's in journalism in, in the States and then I moved to New York City and I was working as a magazine editor for a few years. Now that I'm based in Cape Town, I've actually been freelance writing, do a lot of travel writing for the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Condé Nast Traveler, and Megan and the newspapers like that. Was it your writing that brought you to Cape Town? No, I wish I could say I was that cool and intrepid, but really, I, when I came to Cape Town on holiday, I fell in love with the city, and I also met someone, which I guess is the oldest story in the book. And a year later, we were married, and I'm living here now. I know you have an amazing blog. Oh, thank you. So my last name is Khan, as you know, so my blog is called The South Afrikan, kind of a play on... Cute, on, I on love it. Yeah. When I moved here, I thought, you know, this kind of fish out of water, American and South Africa experience, I should be kind of chronicling that, and just things that I'm discovering here and like places I'm going, people I'm meeting, and just kind of quirky experiences I'm having. One of the things I love most about Cape Town is exploring the little streets and finding awesome boutiques. So, should we go take a walk and see what we can find? Okay, let's drink up. <laughs> Sarah spent nearly five years as an editor for the New York edition of Travel and Leisure. So how was this modern-day nomad lured away from the Big Apple to make a home in the shadow of Table Mountain? I've moved to South Africa, I've loved discovering all the local talent that there is here in terms of fashion and accessories and interior design. So a lot of the streets here in the CBD, like Bree Street and Loop Street, have really cool um, boutiques to these up-and-coming designers and I just love exploring them. During the course of her travels, Sarah has developed a discerning eye and she's able to sift the cute from the kitsch and the original from the derivative with little more than a glance. She's also in the position of being able to compare dozens of cities based on personal experience. So Cape Town faced some stiff competition in winning her over. What do you love most about living in Cape Town? I think it's the energy. I mean, I just moved to the CBD a few months ago and every day I like to just walk in a different direction, just see where things are, see what I kind of stumble upon. And I just think the mixer of the people and the energy that they have and the architecture, these cool new businesses popping up almost every week, it's just such a dynamic place and I feel like right now is such a great moment to be living here. Show me some of the things you love in this store. Oh yeah, let's walk around a bit. So one of my absolute favorite pieces are these watches. Whenever my friends come visit Cape Town, I always make sure they take those home as souvenirs. And I have a few more pieces I like if you want to walk this way with me. So I love this chest. I love it because of the graphic print on the side, which I think is really kind of funky and modern. You're a foodie. Guilty as charged. What are some of your favorite places to grab a bite to eat in the city? There are just so many. I cannot stop eating my way through Cape Town. Bree Street, there's always something new popping up, but I love checking out something new every day. Sarah, thank you so much for spending the afternoon with me. I had such a great time. I had a blast. There you have it, two foreign gems who definitely add to the beauty of Cape Town and have given me more to love about the mother city.